Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, today we're going to take a look at retopologizing, um, which is a process of taking a high density mesh and uh, building a lower density mesh around it uh, so it's more usable so we can unwrap uh, paint textures on it and uh, do some animation with the uh, lower density mesh rather than a crazy one that's uh, millions of polygons big. Um, so what I will do is import an object and um, this is just a sculpt that I did in Sculptrize um, quite a while ago probably. Uh, it's just an object that I haven't done really anything with um, so I thought it would be good for this tutorial um, and what I like to do first things first is just move it to the second layer um, so we've got it on its own layer because um, it can be quite intensive for your computer um, and it helps for certain situations just to be able to quickly turn it off and on again so this is what the character looks like um, it's nothing too detailed but it's just something fun to uh, do rather than just a boring human face uh, so I'll enable this layer as well and select this cube um, and there's not a lot to the retopo uh, mostly the best advice I can give you is to maybe do a Google Images search for uh, edge loops and uh, topology, uh, 3D modeling topology and stuff um, to get an idea if you don't know already um, on sort of how to arrange things. And I'm just deleting all the vertices except for one in the center. Um, so that one's in the dead center. And what I'm going to do is not worry the modifier at you quite yet. Turn on X-ray so that no matter what you can see uh, this mesh on top of everything else. Or this mesh that we're creating. And then you want the snapping. I like to set it to edge because if I just hit Z you can see there's a lot of stuff going on. And there's more than enough edges to be useful. So uh, you can set it to uh, vertex if you like, um, or face. And they'll have relatively the same effect because there's so many of each uh, element that it's not too much of a problem. And then just turn on this uh, snapping button. And it's pretty much a simple process of um, hitting G and as you can see, it might be kind of hard to see because it's just a single vertex, but it, wherever you drag it, it's actually um, snapping to the top of the mesh. So I might start off uh, with an eye. So I do a few vertices around here. And I am in uh, perspective mode, which is always good to be in when you're modeling. Uh, it gives you a better idea of how things are actually going to look in the camera. Um, so if I come out of perspective mode, that's what it looks like, and in perspective mode, that's what it's looked like. So I typically model in perspective mode, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and so I'll start just in the corner, because we're just starting. I'm not going to do a very detailed uh, model right now. Um, the first pass is essentially just getting all the correct edge, edge loops in the, all the correct places um, and then you can go in and add in some more details to the actual model so I'm just hitting uh, E to extrude and just moving my mouse to about where I want a point to be and I've already got a the point there so I will just undo that with X to delete the vertice and fill in that with F and I've got an eye shape as you can see there and that's why I've got X-ray on so I can see I can always see um, the mesh on top because what will happen um, as you sort of start to create polygons uh, you might find that if you turn off X-ray it'll be sort of parts of the 
uh, higher detailed mesh will be poking through, um, which is quite distracting for when you're modelling. Um, so it's just useful to have it like this. And um, I don't actually add in any polygons until pretty much the last step. Um, so I'll build everything how I want it to be. Um, and so I'll have just this sort of cage mesh. And in Blender you can just select everything and hit F. And you won't have to worry too much. Uh, there might be some problem areas, but um, when I was doing a test run of this I didn't have any problems with that. Um, I think I did get a polygon filling in the eye because with a new B-mesh, N-gons are a thing. Um, and an N-gon is a polygon that can have any number of sides. Which are useful in some cases. And not so useful in others. So I'll just sort of rearrange this to make it a bit bit more neater. Try to keep the sort of length of edges fairly consistent and stuff. Um, that looks good. So I can just hit F to build in these edges. Accidentally selected one extra one there. So I've got my first little edge loop in there, um, around the eye. Then I might want to maybe go around the mouth. Um, and I'll just do sort of half the mouth. I don't want to do that, I want to do it Shift D to duplicate. And just sort of try to get it in about the middle. And um, we can fix that up later on. we will add a mirror modifier uh, to the mesh and try to keep the number of edges um, on either side of the loop to be the same just for the sake of consistency um, and it helps keep things like um, helps you keep track of what's going on just in your head um, when it comes to animating and stuff and here's what I was hoping would happen um, you'll probably come into come across this quite often um, the snapping will detect um, sort of faces and edges and everything on the other side of the mesh um, so it's fairly easy to fix what you got to do is just um, select the problem there to see and remove it essentially. Um, you just got to be careful. I mean, as soon as when you're doing stuff, as soon as you move your view uh, with your middle mouse, you'll notice that something's out of whack and it's pretty easy to fix it. Um, sometimes I can sort of go a good half an hour without any problems happening and then uh, suddenly all these vertices will be messing up, but. Um, typically it's it's fairly reliable and it's essentially just a standard modeling technique um, for the mouth I think I'll just go outside the mouth for now I won't go about modeling the lips at this point And I'll just do a couple more edge loops to sort of show you the process. Uh, and then I'll mirror things in the end. Show you some final results. So just following the shape of the mesh. You don't always have to feel like you're confined to exactly how the sculpt looks. Um, 
especially if you're the guy that's designing the whole thing you can take sort of liberties where sometimes it might just not be very practical to build a mesh in a certain way so and these are the sort of things that you learn as you're going so just sort of improvise on the way and I just sort of noticed that these uh, polygons were going to be quite big so I just cut in um, an extra polygon here and you could probably use the new knife tool for this actually just old habits from uh, Blender before it had B-Mesh where, with a nice knife tool and stuff I've typically always just used Control R to cut things, but um, we can just use. I think it's K, and you can just. I think you have to select vertices or something. Oh, I don't know. I haven't played with it too much. I still always use Control R, and I think you actually need polygons for it to work, uh, which we don't have yet. So. I think for now that'll do. Um, I'm just going to select all that and hit F. And as you can see, I filled in that polygon at the top. So I'm just going to delete that. If I got several faces there, so I've got a eyelid and a loop around a mouth. So if I wanted to add in more detail there, I can just Control R, and that's where uh, Control R is too useful for uh, doing edge loops. And then we'll bring in a mirror modifier and I'll just show you what you'll need to do to make that work. Turn on clipping and we'll go to vertex, go to a wireframe or well you will need to um, but select just select everything that's in the center here um, and you can use the C brush to select everything you can uh, right click to select everything, uh, shift right click if you've only got a few because uh, these are the only edges that are intersecting at the moment and just nudge left and right until um, it sort of it will just sort of snap together um, and the clipping essentially creates a sticky plane in the middle where any vertices that touch it get stuck to it um, and I just got a text message so I'll turn that on silent. Um, so for the mirroring, that's all good. Um, and I don't think there's too much more I need to show you, um, other than it just be. Uh, I mean, the rest of this would just be a video of me modelling more edge loops, um, just with the snapping on. Um, and the the big trick is the snapping. Um, if you're using a mirror modifier. That's what you want to do, and having the X-ray on is very useful. Um, and for the sake of showing you some results, this is what I got um, after just a bit of modelling. Um, probably, I think I did it whilst I was just watching a movie. It's fairly easy modelling uh, because the model's pretty much there for you. You're, you're essentially just tracing over it and you don't have to make too many design decisions. Although, as I said, there might be some liberties need to be made. Uh, but this is just the uh, base mesh that I've um, created. Um, and I'll show you in wireframe. And that's pink from where I was um, playing with some subsurf modifiers and trying to get some um, edge reinforcement going on. Um, but you can sort of get an idea of the edge loops I've gone for, sort of some going around uh, the mouth and the nose like that. Some radiating up in there. Um, I think there's a, the edge loop for the eye sort of comes around there. And then some in there. So it's a fairly, it's not very uh, dense. What is there? 300 faces on there, um, which times two, so it's about a 630 polygon head, uh, which is pretty, pretty cheap. Um, pretty sure they're all quads. 
try to keep it to quads, even though you can use egg nods. Um, don't sort of feel like you have to avoid egg nods completely, because they are a useful tool for modelling. Um, but for your final model, you want to keep everything to quads just for the sake of keeping things good. Um, and I'd probably spend some more time working on this, bringing it up to a higher level of detail. Um, so I think that just about covers everything. I um, hope you learned a little bit. Um, and until next time, enjoy!